Welcome to Southern Florida, Spanish Moss, and this is our Cypress Swamp. A swamp is a wetland with trees. Our swamp is typically wet half the year. Cypress and pond apple are among the most flood tolerant tree species. However, even tolerant trees such as these become established primarily during the long droughts. Therefore, Dry per periods are important, even in a wetland. So if you'd like to uh, read more, just press pause. And we're here with our friend John, architect, who was in uh, a live video uh, yesterday. So John, do you want to tell us about where we are and what we're looking at? We are in the Arthur Marshall uh, Wildlife Reserve. This is the northeastern section of the Florida Everglades, the freshwater part. We're about uh, west of Boynton Beach, Florida, uh, the northern part of the Everglades. And if you look out into here, you see it's very swampy, uh, giant ferns, cypress trees, pond apples. This is a very undisturbed uh, environment here that this has never been disturbed there's no brazilian pepper or anything in here and this is really the start of it and we're going to uh take a little walk through here i just wanted to show this to brian mm -hmm. and then thursday we're going to go down and see the saltwater side of things so this is the start of it this is just uh the arthur marshall wildlife reserve okay so we just drove past actually the beginning of uh the great um Massive park system here in southern Florida. The Everglades. So th is this a uh, cypress? Yeah, these are bald cypress trees. Uh, this one here is probably 60, maybe 100 years old. Um, again, this, this is all intact. I see some bigger ones back here. Uh, there's bald cypress. Uh, this is home to uh, there's owls, hooch owl, hoot owls, uh, all kinds of ospreys, otters live in here, uh, millions of amphibians, all kinds of amphibians, alligators. Mm -hmm. It's very dry right now. If you look down, normally you would see water running through here, and these uh, cypress trees can live in water and in dry land. And if they open up a little bit, they have cypress knees that stick up. They call them knees. They're little nodes. And that's how the trees actually get their oxygen. Wow. Uh, maybe there's a couple back here. Yeah, here's one right here. That's a cypress knee. And that's how they actually breathe. Uh, this tree will have probably 20 of these around it. Uh -huh. And they grow about that big. And that's what makes it hard to navigate through these. When the uh, early cowboys came here... And the Indians, they had special horses they called marsh tackies that uh, were small Spanish horses that were bred just to navigate around those knees. Really? Yeah. Marsh tackies. Huh. Yeah. Much like what the Spanish did when they brought the very special type of horse to Peru. They're very right. short. Yes, on one side or the other. Thank you. Thank you. And they're quite able to, uh, they're small horses, so they're quite able to climb up and down mountains and things like that. And that's... Those are the main horses in the highlands of Peru today. There's some wild orchids back here on the on the uh, cypress trees. They're not blooming right now, but these are uh, ghost orchids. These are pretty rare mm -hmm. uh, with a very long leaf back there. And then there's a different type of fern. This is wart fern. If you look underneath here, at certain times of the year, there's nodes all over it, and there are the seeds that are already gone. Uh -huh. uh, and this is a pitch apple tree. Um, it does produce an apple, but it is not edible oh. to humans. Is it poisonous? Uh, it doesn't taste very good. Oh. So, as was pointed out, there are a number of different kinds of ferns. 
Yeah, these are the main ones. You got the, the royal fern, which is the giant one. The swamp fern, which is that one. And then the strap fern, which is the long leaf one that looks just sort of just like the orchid did. Uh-huh. Hmm. So is this uh, the dry time of year? This is the dry time of year, the driest. So if you look down here, this would usually be covered by at least a foot of water, uh -huh. sometimes two. Um, and they, you know, the uh, there are probably animal trails down there that are that's a trail that's going through there. Pigs or deer. Um, the main thing about this is, is this is an intact system. This has never been. Uh, it's they're very sensitive. As soon as you tear things out of here, uh, Australian pine and Brazilian pepper get in here, and it's never the same again. So it's a pretty special place. Huh. And different kinds of talk about the lichens. The cool thing lichen. about the lichens is you can use lichens to uh, find your way in the woods. Uh, they generally grow on the north side of the tree. Oh, really? So if you look at this tree here, you see this pink lichen up here. Uh huh. And this is north right here. Ah. So kind of a neat little trick that people can use to get out of the, the swamp or that's how they would navigate early on it's there there'll be lichens all the way around but they'll predominantly be on the north side of the tree oh okay probably a chip obviously learned from the native people of the area oh, butterfly butterfly So as John said, this coming Thursday, we're going to be taking his boat into the Everglades. We're going to be staying two nights, so of course I'm going to be filming all of that for upcoming YouTube videos. This is just a little primer or primer of uh, the beginning of the Everglades. So screech owls, blue jays. Pileated woodpeckers, the venomous cottonmouth, and the brown anole or anole. Sample of a very big fern. Now, see him up here? He's looking right at us. Come over here. Come over a little bit more. He's looking right at you. Can you see him? No. <laughs> here, put your camera down for one second and find him. He's talking right. That's him. Oh, there. Yeah. You have to look right. Above the green. Yeah, He's above the green right there. He's bobbing his head. Yeah, you're looking right at us. That's a big owl, too. It is. What kind of owl is it? That is a barred owl. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's a lucky, lucky find. Cool. Let's stay here for a second because there may be babies. That's a big one. I'm pretty sure that there's babies around. Uh huh. It's because of the sound that she's making. They usually are just dead quiet. Well, it's amazing to be so close to, uh, to where people are. Yeah, that is pretty rare to see that. If I hadn't heard it walking by, I never would have stopped to look up there. Huh. Dragonflies. All kinds of fun stuff. Possible chemtrails. <laughs> Did 
we can find you a mark or two. And no, we're not going to be encountering any megalithic sites here. This is just a walk through nature. As most of you know, I'm in the process of working my way from Egypt to Peru. I made it from Cairo to Abu Dhabi to JFK to New Jersey. To John's house. To John's house. And John and his, uh, his wife Chris are hosting me. Until I catch a flight and go to Cancun. Then from Cancun, try to proceed my way back to Peru. I, I beat you home by five weeks. This is a red maple tree. Ah. Red maple. Uh-huh. Um, not a super common tree. Common tree, common in the swamp. And not common again. And if we're lucky, we may find a moccasin here. These are this is a lot of cypress knees, and you can see how difficult navigating through this would be if you were on foot. And they trained... See a snake? They trained these marsh tackies to sidestep these knees. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing how fast they could get through here. Wow. And they're little teeny horses. Right, right back that way. Right back that way. On the right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Might have babies. If, you, if you're quiet, you'll hear them hissing. Or hissing. Join us in August of 2020 for our annual Elongated Skulls Tour of Peru and Bolivia. Then in November, our annual tour of exploring the megalithic mysteries of Peru and Bolivia. In February 2021, we're exploring ancient Mexico, including the Toltec, Olmec, Maya, and Aztec cultures and megalithic mysteries. Then in Egypt, or sorry, in March, we have our annual Egypt tour, which will include the Giza Plateau and Osiris Shaft, followed up immediately by exploring ancient megalithic Malta. Thank you so much for watching.